Okay, my AP Calc champions, in this problem, we're going to be talking about functions. So functions f, g, and h are twice differentiable functions with g of 2 is equal to h of 2 is equal to 4. The line y equals 4 plus 2 times 3, 2 over 3 times x minus 2 is tangent to both the graph of g at x equals 2 and the graph of h at x equals 2. Problem A asks us to find h prime at 2. We have some sort of h, let's say it's like this, I don't know, this is random. Um, and then we have this, let's say that this is x equals 2, and we have this line 4 plus 2 over 3 times x minus 2 is tangent to is tangent to h at that line. So we're asked to find h prime of 2. So what essentially we're looking for is the slope of that line. We can rewrite y as 4 plus, we can distribute the 2 over 3 like this. So it's uh, 2 over 3x plus 8 thirds. And then if we were to take the derivative of this line, so that would be y prime of x, we would get just 2 thirds. So the slope of the line y equals 4 plus 2 over 3 times x minus 2 is 2 over 3. And that would basically, that would be h prime of 2. Okay, notice we didn't even need to plug any numbers in. We just used the fact that the line was tangent to the graph of h at x equals 2. Moving on to the next problem, we have let a be the function given by a of x is equal to 3 times x to the third times h of x. Write an expression for a prime of x and then find a prime of 2. All right, so if a of x is equal to 3 times x cubed times h of x, if when we're going to take the derivative of it, we're basically just going to use the product rule here. So we can do the product rule and split it up into these two distinct segments. So a prime of x is going to be, we're going to take the derivative of that first segment, so 9x squared, and then just multiply by h of x, and then we take the derivative of our h of x and we multiply that by our 3x cubed. So that is the expression for a prime of x. Now we're being asked to find a prime of x at x equals 2. So everywhere we see an x, let's just plug in a 2. Okay, so we get 36 times h of 2. We're being told in the problem that h of 2 is 4, so we can go ahead and just plug that in. Then we get 2 cubed, that's 8, times 3, that's 24, times h prime of 2. We just solved for that in the previous problem, so that's that 2 thirds. So we get 144 plus 16, so this simplifies down to 160, and that is a prime of 2, and then, you know, we were asked for two different things in this problem. Here's what our a prime of x is. Moving on to the next problem, we're being told that the function h satisfies h of x is equal to x squared minus 4 over 1 minus f of x cubed for x does not equal 2. It is known that the limit as x approaches 2 of h of x can be evaluated using L'Hopital's rule. Use the limit as x approaches 2 of h of x to find f of 2 and f prime of 2. Show the work that leads to your answers. So remember that L'Hopital's rule is if you find that your limit as x approaches a of f x over g of x is equal to 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity, so in indeterminate form, you can take the derivative of both the numerator and the denominator to solve for the actual limit. And this is based on the conditions that both the functions are differentiable on either side of whatever limit you're approaching. So if we were to plug in for as the limit approaches to for our h of x, we're going to get 2 squared minus 4 over 1 minus f of 2 cubed. So you'll notice that up top we're going to get a 0, and down bottom we should also expect to get a 0. Why? Because we're, we're saying that it can be evaluated using L'Hopital's rule. That means that this has to be an indeterminate form, and the only way for that to work is if our denominator also equals 0. So we're going to get 1 minus f of 2 cubed is equal to 0. We can add the f of 2 cubed to the other side, so we get 1 is equal to f of 2 cubed. So if we take the cube root of both sides, the cube root of 1 is just going to be 1. So we've determined that 
f of 2 is equal to 1. So that's one of the answers that we were being asked for. Then we need to find f prime of 2. So we're being told that L'Hopital's rule applies and it, that we can find the limit as x approaches 2 of h of x using L'Hopital's rule. So that means that we should be able to find the actual limit as x approaches 2 if we take the derivative of both the numerator and denominator. And remember that we were being told that g of 2 equals h of 2 equals 4. So we should be able to say that the limit as x approaches 2 of h of x should be 4, just by the definition of, of limits, okay? So we want to take the derivative of the numerator and denominator, so we're going to get that the limit as x approaches 2 is going to be, what's the derivative of the numerator? It's just going to be 2x. The denominator, our 1 is going to go away, and then our 3 is going to come down. We're using power rule, so now we have f of x squared, and then we need to multiply it by f prime of x. So now we can go ahead and plug in, and all this should equal 4 just based on our understanding of limits. So we can go ahead and plug in 2 everywhere that we see an x. So up top we have 2 times 2, and then here we're going to have f of 2, and then we're going to have f prime of 2, and that should equal 4. So this is going to be equal... 4 over minus 3 times f of 2 squared. Remember that f of 2 is just 1, so this is going to be negative 3 times f prime of 2. We can go ahead and multiply both sides by negative 3 times f prime of 2, so we get negative 12 times f prime of 2 is equal to 4. We can divide everything by 4 to sort of simplify this out, so this will be 1, this is going to be negative 3, and then we get negative 3 times f prime of 2 is equal to 1. Divide both sides by negative 3. We get f of 2 is equal to negative 1 over 3. And that is the second thing that the problem was asking us for. All right, moving on to the next problem. We've got, it is known that g of x is less than or equal to h of x for x is between 1 and 3. Let k be the function satisfying g of x is less than or equal to k of x is less than or equal to h of x for x is between 1 and 3. Is k continuous at x equals 2? Justify your answer. Since we're being told that g and h are twice differentiable functions, that means they're also both continuous. What this should mean is that the limit as x approaches 2 of g of x is equal to g of 2, so that's going to be 4. And then the limit as x approaches 2 of h of x should also equal h of 2, which is 4. And then we can apply something here called the squeeze theorem. I love this theorem. It's, it's got a fun little name. Um, it's also sometimes called the sandwich theorem, which honestly just makes me a little hungry. <laughs> but basically, we're being told that k of x should be in between g of x and h of x. So let's say, for example, this is completely, this is probably not what our functions look like, but this is just as an example. And then let's say green. So let's say we have these three functions. Let's say the green one is k of x. Let's say the yellow one is h of x. And let's say the blue one is g of x. So the squeeze theorem basically says that if this condition is held, the limit as x approaches 2 of k of x should also be in between these limits that we've established here. At x equals 2, our h of x is 2 and our g of x is 2. So if k of x is in between h of x and g of x, do you have a guess for what k of x at 2 would be? Well, it would also have to be 2, okay? Because we're saying that g of x should be less than or equal to k of x should be less than or equal to h of x for x is between... 1 and 3, and x equals 2 would 100% fit within that range. So we're saying g of 2 is going to be less than or equal to k of 2 is going to be less than or equal to h of 2. So since g of 2 is 4 and h of 2 is 4, that's just something we're being told in the problem, we have to assume that k of 2 is also going to be 4. And then we can also assume that since the limit as x approaches 2 of g of x, should be less than or equal to the limit as x approaches 2 of k of x, should be less than or equal to the limit as x approaches 2 of h of x, and 
if this is 4, this is 4, then we can assume that the limit as x approaches 2 of k of x should also equal 4. So we're using that squeeze theorem here to prove that the limit as x approaches 2 of k of x is equal to 4. Then, because k of 2 is equal to the limit as x approaches 2 of k of x, then k is continuous at x equals 2. So here we're using our definition of continuity, and that proves to be true for our k at x equals 2. Hopefully that helps you out with this AP Calculus problem. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below and I'll get back to you. And I hope you have a great rest of your day.